the Warriors finally won an NBA game. And even though it was against the Chicago Bulls, a win is a win. I'm going to be breaking down everything and how even though the Warriors just won this game, they can't get too comfortable. I mean, one win doesn't really mean anything in the long run and the Warriors are in shambles. But at the very same time, we've just seen the upside of this team. So today is a bit of a complicated one. So let's not waste any time and dive straight in. Tonight was a great game for basically everyone on the Warriors roster. Although neither team played defense, the Bulls or the Warriors, the scoring numbers were pretty crazy. Klay Thompson had a 30 piece, Andrew Wiggins had 9 points in the first quarter alone, and Kaminga ended with an absurd 24 points in 24 minutes, averaging a point per minute. Meanwhile, the other rookie, Trace Jackson Davis, averaged 13 or he scored 13 and 7. And even though Kobe White, Zach Levine, and DeMar DeRozan combined for 89 points, the Warriors were still able to pull out of there for a road win. They shot 42% from three and 52% from the field. And the thing that really set them apart from the Bulls this game was their rebounding because they outscored the Bulls 44-36 in the rebounding battle and in offensive rebounds, they won 13-6. Now, 13 is too above the league's most offensive rebounds average, which is the Boston Celtics who average 11. Defensive rebounds, they outscored the Bulls by one, and they also shared the ball better. They had eight more assists than the Bulls. They also had three turnovers the entire game, which was most definitely the difference maker. Usually, the Warriors average 10 assists per game. Three is absolutely crazy for them. And even though they played so well offensively, they did not play well defensively. They only had 11 stocks, and the Bulls shot 58% from field. And that's what the Warriors really need. Someone who is good at defense. Because although all these stats are very impressive, you can't forget that this Warriors team was playing the Chicago Bulls, who are literally one of the most dysfunctional franchises in NBA. With Zach Levine asking for a trade, I don't even know how much time ago. But yeah, it just didn't look good. Steph Curry in the fourth tonight played absolutely phenomenally, having 15 points on 76% true shooting, and their 39 to 3 assist ratio was very, very impressive. It also seems like Klay Thompson always goes off against Chicago on games because he, of course, broke the three point record against them a few years back and had seven threes tonight which is extremely, extremely impressed. But even though the Warriors won the game, this is where the narrative needs to start to switch. Because everyone went absolutely off, and Andrew Wiggins actually played like a half-decent NBA player for once, which definitely saved the Warriors tonight. This will not happen every night. It won't happen at all. They are not going to all go off. Clay is not going to have 30 pieces with 7 made threes. And Steph has just been very inconsistent lately. Steph, I can... Like, the Warriors can rely on him to be a very good player consistently. And he just needs to step up to his old level. But everyone else, you can't really rely on them. Which is why it was announced that the Warriors are open to trading anyone but Steph Curry for the right trade and honestly i feel like that is very very value very very valid and speaking of value which i just accidentally said andrew wiggins has been reported to have near zero value and kevon looney has been reported to have also near zero value which is very sad because those are two guys that the Warriors desperately need to get rid of. The trade rumors floating around are currently for someone like Pascal Siakam, but recently the Warriors have disengaged from talks, and Laurie Markinen. 
Now, the reason that Lori Markinen is an interesting trade to delve into is because he is what the Warriors want. An offensive-minded seven-footer, quote, from Mike Dunleavy Jr. Now, if you're thinking about the Warriors and offensive-minded seven-foot players, hey, one name pops into mind, and that name is is Kevin Durant because he was on the Warriors and he was absolutely phenomenal with them being the offensive minded seven footer that he is the Clay and Curry combined for 13 threes but this won't happen again honestly with Chris Paul being out it has been a bit tough for the Warriors they were on a three game losing streak before tonight and Chris Paul honestly seems to keep this team apart, which is really interesting because he has actually been rumored out of the most players on the Warriors to be traded because he also holds a bit of value. He is a mentor and a win-now player because as we've seen with the Warriors, he's very, very great at handling the ball. The Warriors this season, they are going to make some big trades and we are going to have to, unfortunately, watch some of our players leave. Whether it's one of the new rookies, Brandon Pajemski, or Trace Jackson Davis, who have become an instant staple of Bay Area culture, or even someone else. Like, for example, Draymond Green. Now, Draymond is a bit doubtful because he has been a big part of the Warriors, but he hasn't even been that good for the Warriors. The Warriors had a better record without him in the first few games that he was gone, and I think that they can adapt to a game without him. One trade that's been thrown around a lot is either Draymond or Wiggins plus Dario Sarge and a first round pick for Miles Turner and a second, which is very, very interesting because Miles Turner would provide defense for the Warriors which is much needed, and we especially see that after tonight's game. Now, as a Warriors fan, it is a brutal situation. I'm really wondering whether I want the Warriors to lose and then trades will be made, or for them to win and their record improves. Because, hey, both of them are pretty good for me. But me personally, I think that trades need to be made. The reports that we've heard pertaining to the Warriors heading into the trade line are these. Everyone not named Steph Curry is on the trading block. They have interest in Pascal Siakam, interest in Laurie Markkinen, interest in DeJounte Murray, and Andrew Wiggins is likely to be traded. That's it for today's video, and I hope you all have a good night or a good day by the time you're seeing this. Peace.